All right, now, if we're gonna have this conversation, there's one rule we need to set up front. My eyes are up here. <laughs> oh, God, that was stupid. Super Mario Odyssey! Oh, man, this game is finally released. And, oh, man, it's really damn good. I know. Shocker. It's crazy that within the first year of Nintendo's shiny new console, the Switch, not only did we get a massive Legend of Zelda game with Breath of the Wild, but a return to the sandbox-style Mario games of yore as well. And you know what's even crazier? This game released just shy of Super Mario Galaxy's 10-year anniversary. Oh god, it's already been 10 years? Oh no. As it now stands, this is the seventh 3D Mario title, but a game of this style hasn't been done since the likes of Mario 64 and Sunshine. Now, Galaxy is one of my favorite games of all time, but it began a trend of creating Mario games that, albeit were incredibly polished and a ton of fun, were very linear. The fact alone that this is a return to form while also being entirely brand new is reason enough to be excited. It also helped that the song Jump Up Superstar is, well, incredible. I mean, yeah, of course I was excited for Super Mario Odyssey. Really, who wasn't? I did enjoy the last two games, the 3D series, I guess we'll call them, but going back to Super Mario 64 as a base finally made a whole lot of sense. You're gonna do that, you're gonna bring the series backwards, and you're also gonna push it forward. You're gonna trigger a lot of nostalgia along the way. It just made perfect sense. So just a bit of a heads up, there will be some minor spoilers here. Nothing major like the final boss or some hidden unlockable levels, but some stuff that you may think you would have preferred not to know. Just a bit of a heads up. The thing is, a lot of you guys have asked for my opinion on the game, so I'm gonna give it to you. Without further ado, Let's -a go. Okie dokie. Princess Peach has been kidnapped once again, and it's up to Mario to save her. Yep. Okay, fine, that's not the entire plot, but it's the same premise that we're all delightfully or painfully used to, depending on how you look at it. The kicker this time is Bowser's plan to marry Peach. And I mean, he definitely dressed up for the part. Look at him, looking all snazzy. And in this battle that they have, Bowser actually wins, and after destroying his trusted hat, Mario Crash lands in the mysterious Cap Kingdom. <laughs> and here is where we meet Cappy, this adorable Cap ghost who possesses Mario's hat, not only giving it some very sweet Banjo-Kazooie eyes, but also giving you the ability to toss it odd job style. And ah, oh, ah, oh, this mechanic is amazing. And there's two reasons why. First up is the more obvious one, being able to toss it onto damn near anything and possess it, or as the game puts it, capturing. Ah, that's uh, adorable. To say that this adds variety would be greatly underselling it. There are dozens of creatures and hell, even inanimate objects that you can control just at the flick of a hat. And there's really not a single one that's not enjoyable to play as. Capture a Goomba and create a menacing Goomba tower. Then take a picture of it to secure the precious memories. Capture a lava bubble and do some really sweet lava pool platforming. Capture one of these guys, the Moe eyes, and... Hell yeah. And like only an hour into the game, you turn into a damn T-Rex. It's so awesome! And sure, not all of them are amazingly engaging, but I think that's the point. For crying out loud, you can just become a manhole cover. It's a me, Manholio. And you know what? It's interesting. This whole capturing thing is a bit like, ah, uh, dare I say Kirby? Changing your abilities at a moment's notice depending on what you interact with? Huh, fancy that. Now listen, I can't help it if Nintendo finally realized what their greatest franchise is. I, I knew it all along, and they just finally- the comparisons made a whole lot of sense, okay? I'm just saying. The second reason Cappy is awesome is a bit more important, in my opinion. The movement options. 
Oh wow! So when you toss Cappy, you can keep him suspended in midair, and you can bounce on top of it. That, combined with a dash dive that you can perform in air, you can do some of the longest jumps Mario has ever jumped. On top of that, you can also do this rolling move with momentum so smooth it would make modern Sonic jealous, and of course the tried and true ground pound with a high jump option as well. And it is important to point out that Mario is simply a joy to control, possibly the best he has ever felt, and that is due to the simplicity of his controls. Most of his actions are only tied to two buttons. However, mastering Cappy allows you to traverse the lands with nearly endless possibilities. For example, you could just capture a bullet bill here as Nintendo intended and break through the walls and go over the gaps, or you could just pass this section entirely. The developers managed to create a playstyle that caters to both casual and hardcore players, and that is quite frankly amazing. The only downside that I can really think of is there is this cool spinning cappy move that is only useful with motion controls, and that's really a shame. You can use it by spinning yourself first and then attacking, but it's too cumbersome that way, just snapping your controllers to the side is not as intuitive as it should be, especially if you're using the Pro Controller. But really, that is the only control complaint that I have. It is certainly a step up from Mario games prior, that much is easy. Who can forget the versatility of Super Mario Sunshine? Beautiful. And then there's the adventure itself, and uh, yeah, it's about time we finally start talking about that. Mario will find himself in these different kingdoms, and each one of them is an adventure in and of themselves. The worlds that these kingdoms present to you are massive, offering you dozens of power moons to collect, which are this game's power stars. Once you first land, there is definitely some direction, with story-based missions pushing you towards typically a fight, usually against one of these new bad guys, the Brutals, wedding planning rabbits. All the funnier considering the whole pulling a rabbit out of the hat thing. Ha. Leading you to special multi-moons. But along the way and plenty after, you are free to do whatever you want. Tackling anything that you can see that looks even remotely interesting. And more times than not, there will be a moon on the other side. Not every single moon is task-based. A good chunk of them you just sort of run into, which honestly, didn't really need to be in the game and I don't think I would miss them, but it is still really fun to gather a whole bunch, then toss them all into your ship at once. Oh, that's satisfying. Aside from the moons, there are also the special kingdom coins used to purchase some goodies in that kingdom shop of the brand Crazy Cap. Here you can buy some goodies and souvenirs for inside of your cap ship, or, and this is way better, new outfits. You can get a bunch of new hats and a bunch of new sets of clothes, and you can mix and match them to whatever you like, and it always put a huge smile on my face. And what's awesome is these are a bunch of references alone. Some of them are relatively obvious, like of course you got Dr. Mario, and there's even his outfit from the bit more unknown Mario's Picross. And on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, this one is based off of Mario's cameo in the game NES Open Tournament Golf. No, it's not from Smash Brothers. And this one is from an international exclusive Super Game Boy commercial. What? That is insane. You know, over the years I just figured that anything that's in Nintendo's big vault of stuff from their past will just rot in there until the end of time. You got like Star Tropics and Mole Mania, who even cares about those anymore? But then, they make a direct reference to kicks on the Game Boy? Mamma Mia! What's really nice about this game's progression is you don't even need to finish the story missions to move on to the next kingdom. You just need the correct amount of moons to power up your ship just enough and you can go. I didn't even fight the boss of the Luncheon Kingdom until I beat the game. It was purely accidental, I somehow forgot about the extra mission I had to do there, but the fact that I did that and it was totally fine, that's pretty cool. And as for the kingdoms themselves, well, honestly, they're okay. 
The whole idea is that you travel to all of these vastly different locales as a travel destination. Each kingdom has its own travel brochure. That is pretty great. However, thematically, none of them are really all that outstanding. They're gorgeous, for sure, but nothing that's too out of the ordinary, especially when you compare it to Mario Galaxy. Some of the art style choices are pretty odd too. Previous Mario games did a really good job sticking to its own artistic rules throughout the entire game, but then you just get tossed into the realistic New Donk City, and it's, it's just bizarre. Even when they're standing right next to Pauline, the regular humans are just... they're weird looking. And honestly, that would be a much bigger complaint if this wasn't my favorite kingdom in the entire game, I love Metro Kingdom so much. As someone who grew up in New York City, having a mission that's just trying to get through a massive flow of people was honestly one of the greatest things I've ever seen. And the fact that Mario himself is so differently designed than everyone else that the realistic humans are no more bizarre than these little snail guys, that is hilarious. Essentially, I didn't hate any of the kingdoms, far from it, none of them are bad. However, other than Metro Kingdom, I didn't necessarily love any of them either. Thankfully, the hours that I spent in each to collect all of the moons made each of these locales super memorable. Really, this is a super minor complaint in the grand scheme of things. Some moments in the game even got me to tear up. No joke, if you played through the adventure yourself, you know exactly the parts I'm talking about. And when I say all of the moons, there are close to 900 of these things. That's not, not 120, not 240, close to 900. And I got all of them. I think I drove myself crazy getting all of those moons in such a short amount of time. I put a lot of time in like five days into this game. And to be fair, once you see the credits, a wealth of post-game content becomes available. It's kind of amazing how much stuff there is to do. It is the best post-game content Nintendo has ever done. There's still quite a few moons that didn't need to be in the game, but aside from that, good on you, Nintendo. I just wish I was able to sleep in a few of those days. I, I, ooh, I didn't sleep a lot. I think ultimately it would have been a bit better to have less moons that were more goal-oriented, as near the end of my adventure, it really became a bit of a grind to get those last few dozen. Thankfully though, if you are ever stuck, there are ways to get hints to point you in the right direction of another moon. And thank the stars for that, because this game simply would not have been completed otherwise. Finding the last few kingdom coins can be a bit of a struggle too, and it's a shame that the ability to locate where they are is restricted to the wedding Bowser amiibo. That's unfortunate. But, on the other hand, there's a wedding Bowser amiibo! There's also a wedding peach amiibo that gives Mario a dress to play in. And boy, he looks beautiful. And this is totally an instance of the journey is way better than the destination. Unfortunately, the 100% reward, in my opinion, is fairly lame. Somehow, aside from playing as Luigi in Galaxy, Nintendo has consistently faltered with creating really great completion rewards. Do not even get me started with Sunshine's new picture. I will hurt somebody. I didn't regret getting all of the moons because for like 90-95% of the time, I was having a blast. It's just a shame that you don't get something really cool for all of your troubles. I will also say that the game is pretty easy and never really gets all that challenging. Like the bosses, for example. To fight a lot of them, you will often use captured enemies, which is great and it's some really good fun, but none of them are really all that difficult. I especially liked fighting this thing. I got some really strong Pikmin vibes from fighting this one and that's, that's gonna make me happy no matter what you do. The focus of the majority of the game is purely on exploration. Very sporadically will you dive into some core platforming. And again, it is still a ton of fun and there are definitely plenty of moments where I fell and lost a handful of coins, but overall it would have been nice to have some more trickier parts near the end. Aside from a final challenge level that almost caused me to snap my Joy-Cons in half. That's like one of my favorite additions to Mario games as of late, the final challenge level that's a culmination of all of your skills. I won't spoil any footage of it here, but rest assured, it's a good and challenging time. So yeah, if you weren't already convinced coming into this video, Super Mario Odyssey is a masterpiece. 
it's not perfect, you know, no game is. And at the end of the day, I think I still prefer Galaxy's approach of more levels with more concentrated designs, but this is easily the best of the sandbox trio, and probably, and this may be a bit of hyperbole, one of the most enjoyable games of all time, certainly in the last few years. Between the dozens of hours of content with hundreds of moons to find, environments that are consistently gorgeous and fun to traverse through, and a soundtrack that I will have on loop for years to come, Super Mario Odyssey is something special. It shares the same mentality of Breath of the Wild, bringing the series backwards to push the game forward, with massive worlds that we once used to dream of, and also allow the main characters to be shirtless. I take back this entire video, this is the reason why these games are good. If you still don't have a Nintendo Switch, this is the game that should push you over the edge. A game this good only shows up once in about a decade or so. Is it too soon to ask for Odyssey 2 yet?